Okay, let's get started. Let's open it up, see what we got. We have our instruction manual. This is gonna go through everything from how to start using your gun, how to load the paint, how to clean it. We're gonna also cover all that stuff with you. We have the unit and the gun. First of all, this is our air compressor. It's very small, fits in the hand very easily. We have the gun that's also in the box. And of course, of course, the power adapter to the compressor. And this little plastic thing, I'll tell you what this is. I don't really use it, but I'll tell you what it's for. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to take your air compressor. In the back end, you have this little plastic flap. We're gonna expose the hole that we're going to put the adapter in. I want you to plug this into the wall for an hour and a half. We wanna fully charge the compressor before we use it. Okay, I was telling you we have this little plastic squeezer. This is actually for applying paint into the gun or I guess you could use it for running water through the gun. I never use this. Personally, I'm just gonna put it to the side and forget about it, but you can also use it for those different reasons. Next, we have our gun. We're gonna show you how to prep it and get it ready for use. When you first receive your gun, the needle is not pushed all the way forward where it needs to be. We do this so it does not bend during shipping. So what we wanna do is we're going to remove the black cap from the back Right here we have a chucking nut. We're going to loosen that up just a little bit and this is gonna free the needle. We're gonna take the needle and we're gonna slightly push it forward very lightly. You never wanna be aggressive when you're working with the needle and we're gonna push it until we feel it stop. Don't push any harder. We don't wanna bend the needle. Once we feel it stop, we can tighten this back up, the chucking nut, all the way. This is going to get you ready for use. So now we're going to go ahead and screw the back end, the black cap back on all the way down. And now we're ready to attach our gun to our compressor. So we went and grabbed our compressor off the charger. The light was fully on. There's a light in front, so we know it's fully charged and ready to go. And now we're ready to attach the gun part to the compressor. So we have the neck of the compressor and we have the end part of the gun. They're both threaded. We're just gonna start slowly tightening onto the compressor and we're gonna get it right where it fits snugly. You don't wanna keep on pushing and torquing it tighter and tighter and tighter. What this will do is it will make it where the air does not flow from the compressor to the gun. So we just wanna basically hand tightened, not extreme tight. You want the front of the gun to be pointed to the on off button. This is gonna make it really nice, easy to hold, really comfortable, and we're ready to use our gun. This gun is a dual action gun. What that means is when we push down, air flows. When we pull back, air flows and the paint is pushed out of the gun. Now, when you receive it, you may notice that the trigger is not pulling back. It's not moving. So as you can see, I'm pushing down and I'm trying to pull back, but nothing's happening. So what this means is we need to loosen this nut right here on the back of the cap. We're gonna loosen it up. And what that does is it gives us movement of the trigger. The more we loosen it, the further back the trigger will go. Now, what this means is the tighter you have this, the less paint that is going to blow out the gun and the finer lines you're going to have. The more that we open this up, the more we can pull back the needle, more paint will be blown out the gun, giving us bigger lines and more coverage. Now let's get into how we place the paint inside the well and how we use our machine. So we have 14 beautiful colors that we've hand-picked. We're gonna use black right now. And what I want you to do when you get your color is I want you to shake it. That way it's nice and mixed and ready to go. Once we have that, we're gonna put some drops into the whale of the gun. So we're just gonna put about 
four or five drops. You don't want to overfill it because if you do, when you point it forward to spray the gun, it'll flow out and over the tip of the gun. A little paint goes a long way. Okay, so we're gonna grab a table towel and I'm gonna show you how we spray the gun. So when you turn it on, you have your on off button right here. There's two levels of pressure. The first level is the max pressure. The second time we push it is a lower pressure. Now, I only use the highest pressure. The lower pressure will just make less of the paint come out of the gun. You can control that by your trigger. So just use it on the highest speed. Okay, so remember, this is a dual action. So when we push down, you can see there's only air coming out of the gun. But as we slowly start to pull back, as we push down, that's when the paint is released. The further the back, the further back you pull, the more paint is released. We can also adjust the flow here so we can pull the trigger back even farther. Remember, the tighter this is, the thinner lines we get, the looser it is, the more we can pull the trigger back and more paint is released. I really recommend when you get your gun is go ahead and get a table towel out and really practice the motion because if you pull back fully on the gun, it's gonna release a lot of paint at once and if you're doing a nail, it's just gonna kind of splatter everywhere and it can release too much paint which makes the nail too wet. So if you practice prior, this is gonna help you when you go to the nail. Now once you're ready to apply to the nail, I always recommend still having a table towel out. I always spray on the towel before I go onto the nail. This is really gonna give me an idea of how the paint's coming out of the gun. That way I don't make any mistakes on the nail. Just gonna slowly pull it back, keep it nice and controlled, and it's done. So even when I go to the next nail, before I go to the nail, I always go to the towel and then start on the nail. This will really help you not get too much paint at once on a nail. Then onto the next nail, spray here, and we're slowly work our way up, doing a nice little black ombre. Next, we're gonna show you how to clean the gun or flush it out of a color so you can move on to a next color or put it away until we do a full clean later. I want you to get a squirt bottle or I used to use a uh, water spray bottle. This is gonna help you flush and get rid of the excess paint out of the well. Now there's airbrush cleaners that you can purchase online on Amazon. Personally, I normally just use warm water. It's a water-based paint, so it's really easy to clean. Okay, so we're gonna turn the gun on. We're gonna spray out all the excess paint until there's nothing coming out. Then we're going to put the water through the gun. We're just going to start pouring the water in and as we're pouring it in, we're flushing it out the system by pulling the trigger back. We're gonna do this until we don't see any more black coming out of the gun. Now you can use this technique as I'm using it in a towel or in a garbage pail, or there's actual jars that you can also purchase online. What's nice about these, it kind of has a resting part for your gun, so it holds it itself, and this kind of, this contains the fumes as it's being cleaned. So again, we can flush it. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we no longer see any paint in the well of the gun. Once we've done this, we can either switch to a different color paint or we can put it aside until the next use. It is extremely important to flush your gun clean of the paint after every use. If you don't do this, the paint will dry inside the gun and it will get clogged and it will make it impossible to spray any paint out of the gun. Okay, so after you've used the gun all day, 
you want to go ahead and do a more thorough cleaning. And this will keep your gun clean. It'll keep it where you don't have the frustration of it clogging. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. We're going to remove the gun from the compressor. Now I want to show you something. There's two parts that can unscrew here. We want to unscrew from the base of the compressor. So if you start spinning here, sometimes it'll start unscrewing right at this spot. What I want you to do is I want you to hold the gun tight and I want you to unscrew with the compressor. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead and take our compressor. We're going to put it back on our charger. Now let's get ready to clean the gun. Okay, so now we're going to do a full clean on our gun. I want you to take the black cap off the back and we're just going to set this to the side. We're going to loosen the chucking nut and we can go ahead and go and we can go ahead and remove this and set it to the side. There's this piece right here that also can unscrew. I want you to make sure that it's nice and hand tight and that way we can go ahead and pull the needle out without worrying about our trigger falling out. So as you can see, even though we flush the gun clean, there's still black on the needle. So we're going to go ahead and clean this first and set it to the side. So all I've done is taken a lint free wipe and put polish remover on it. And we're just going to clean the needle through it and get rid of the paint. You always want to be very careful with the needle. It bends very easily. Plus it's very sharp. So once you've cleaned it, we're going to go ahead and set this to the side too. Now I have myself a nice hot bowl of water and this is what we're going to clean the gun with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this very tip piece of the gun off and we're just going to unscrew it right here. And we're going to take this piece and put it in the water. Once we've done that, we have another screw right here. We're going to loosen that up and we're going to put it in the water. And you can see that very tip of the gun has a little dry piece of paint and this is why we go ahead and thoroughly clean it after every evening. Once we have that, I'm just going to go ahead and set the whole gun in the water. Now depending on how dirty the gun is, I might leave this max in the water for about 10 minutes before I go ahead and scrub it clean. I don't like to leave the gun in the water. We don't want any parts to rust or any of the rings to get warped. So I try to minimize how long we put it in the water. Okay. Once it's sat in the water for a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and take just a plastic manicure brush and we're going to scrub our pieces. So we're going to take this tip part, going to wet, we're just going to make sure it's nice and clean, that there's no paint stuck in it. Go ahead and pick up our next piece. Again, I'm being very gentle. Some of these parts are very small and we don't want to ruin them and we don't want to bend them. So it doesn't take a lot of pressure. Again, the paint is water based. So putting it in water cleans it pretty good in itself. Now for the main piece of the gun. This tip is very delicate. So again, I just want to lightly get any of that dry paint off. And I'm just, just so lightly touching it and cleaning it. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and move to the whale part of the gun. I'm going to take my brush, wet it, and we're just going to scrub it out. I'll hold it sideways that way all that dry paint can come right out of it. Just pulling it out with the bristles of the brush. We can be a little more aggressive in this part. There's no delicate parts to this part. And we just want to make sure that we thoroughly clean it. You can see the little bits of dry paint floating around. Turn it upside down and get it to come out that way. Once we have our well nice and clean, we're going to go ahead and pat it dry and put it back together. Okay, we've pulled everything out, we've patted it dry, and we're ready to assemble the gun back together. We're going to start with this tip piece on the front of the gun. 
Now, any of the pieces that you're tightening, it's always just a hand tightening. You don't need to get a tool out. You don't need to make it hard. That way, when you go to unscrew it again, it's easy to do. So just hand tighten everything. So we have that piece on. Let's go ahead and grab the very end piece. We'll screw that back on. Now we're ready to put the needle back through. I push down on the trigger, grab the needle, and we're gonna carefully slide it through. The reason we push down on the trigger, there's a slot that the needle goes through. It's gonna make it easier for it to go through without forcing it. Again, we're just gonna push until we find the end. Don't force it, don't slam it. Just go until you feel it naturally stop. Once we have that, we can go ahead and put the checking nut back on and tighten it. Test the trigger to make sure it's pulling the needle back and we're ready to put the end piece back on. I'm gonna slide it on, screw it on. Now we can store it and put it away and it's ready to use for tomorrow. Now there's two issues you can run into when you're cleaning the gun. We talked about this piece right here to make sure that it's nice and tight when you're disassembling the gun. Now, if it's loose, problem number one that can happen, we're gonna unscrew it and loosen it, is when you go to set it in the water or you turn it, your trigger can fall out. Now, this isn't a problem, you didn't break it, we can fix it. So what I'm gonna show you is we're gonna actually keep it loose. It's a little flap right here, we're gonna push that back. Okay, we have this pushed back. We're gonna take our trigger, the flat, unriveted side faces forward. It faces the front of the gun. We're gonna take that gold piece and we're gonna stick it right through into the hole and push down. Now we've put the gun back, the trigger back, where it needs to be, okay? Once we have that, we wanna go ahead and tighten this back up so it holds everything in place. Again, if you're cleaning it, just don't loosen this part, and that way you never have to worry about it. The second issue that we can run into if this is not tightened is when you go to put the back end back on and you try to screw it on, it won't attach, it won't thread into the gun. And the reason the reason is, is this is not allowing it. So again, if this is not tightened, you're gonna run into one of these problems. So we make sure everything's nice and tight. Then we can attach and start threading our gun again. Now, a few things that can happen and one of the main things that can happen is you go to use the gun and it's clogged. You're pulling, you're pushing, nothing's coming out. So I'm gonna show you a few things that you can do that can fix that problem really quickly. The first thing that I will do if this happens is I will loosen the cap. That way we can get a lot of air and a lot of paint, pull the needle back as far as we can. I push down and I pull back as far as I can and I will wiggle it a couple times. This will usually fix the problem. It loosens any of the dry paint, it frees the needle, and paint will start flowing out the tip. Step number two, if that does not solve the problem, you can unscrew the end cap. We're gonna loosen the chucking nut just slightly, just so where we can move the needle, and we'll pull the needle back. Sometimes it, it might have a good grip, just pull it, until you feel it loosen, and then you can slightly, gently push it back to the end of the gun. Once that's done, we tighten the nut back up, and we can put our cap back on. Now, everything's loose, and paint can flow from the gun. Another issue that you can run into sometimes is you'll notice some dry bits or you're getting slight splatter as the paint's coming out. This usually means that some paint has dried on the very tip of the needle. So what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this whole part 
So at this point, what I can do is I can take that same manicure brush that I used to clean my gun out and I can just gently, again, remember the needle is very delicate, gently rub it and free the dry paint. Now we can put the end cap back on. And the gun's ready to be used. So like anything that we use in salon, our implements, our pedicure stations, there's maintenance that's required. Same thing with the airbrush gun. It's very minimal, but if you follow these techniques, you flush your gun, you do a deep cleaning at the end of the day, you'll have no problems.